Hi everyone, welcome to another Learn, Grow, Invest meeting. I'm Jermaine, co-founder for this community. Today we have another episode of our CEO series. We have the great pleasure of speaking with actually the CEO and CFO of JMMB Group Limited. So we're just going to jump right into that. Sorry for the delay in starting, but we are ready to go. Just let me load that intro. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, welcome again and let us open in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you that we're able to see it. Lord, I pray that as we seek to grow as investors, that you'll give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. So you know the usual. Please like the video. Please share the video. Uh, share it with anyone who is interested in learning about investing. I do have some announcements. Remember, we have our free class coming on September 3rd, so be sure to register for that class. I'll speak more about it at the end. Let me bring on our guest now very quickly. <laughs> Let me start with Keith. Hi, Keith. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you very much, um, Jeremy. Thanks for having having me. I apologize for, um, because I'm actually in a location in um, Salt Spring in Montego Bay up in the hills. Um, I had a, we had a, we were working with the community, a community up here and went over time so i apologize oh, I understand, I understand. And it, it, it's actually a good thing that you're doing so we understand we really do appreciate the time so what what we can do is let's make the most of the time that you have when it's time to go then we'll we'll continue on with with patrick so okay. um for those who let's say that somebody is joining this meeting for the very very first time they've never heard about jmmb can you give us an overview of 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 JMMB, the company, right? Help us to understand JMMB. Okay. Thank you very much again. Thanks for the question. Well, JMMB is 30 years old this year. And JMMB started as a primarily a money market company, a fixed income introducing the money market to Jamaica because there was no fixed income secondary market in Jamaica. There was no money market instruments, repurchase agreements, money market funds. There was nothing um, be fixed income oriented in um, the Jamaican market. And um, John Duncan, um, along with our um, former chairman, Dr. Noel Lyon, um, John Duncan had a vision for introducing the money market to Jamaica. Dr. Noel Lyon saw it and he came on board and he worked with our brought in the shareholders and started JMB 30 years ago. So we're primarily fixed income to begin with. A fixed income operator became like the first primary dealer operator of the, um, they were the primary dealer um you know um, function was brought into jamaica and um and so we have evolved from uh, being just as um, a fixed income operator to a securities dealer to a to to banking to mutual funds management to um into an insurance brokering and so we have now become an integrated financial services group but we have also evolved into um across the region through regional diversification into the Dominican Republic and yes. Trinidad and Tobago with our integrated financial services model. And, um, and, and we have also evolved into where we consider ourselves strategic investors. So we have taken a, um, a, 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 a strategic, um, being my, um, the largest shareholder in such a core financial group. So, um, you know, we have grown massively over the last 30 years and we're very proud of that growth. But what's most important is a client that is most important to us. And, um, and that is where we have focused on the client, the customer, the consumer experience. But we're coming from a place and a culture of best interest. Like we have best interest for Jamaica, we have best interest for our clients, and we have best interest in terms of them achieving their financial goals, objectives. Whether they are small business, big business, individual, retail, want your, want your children to be educated, want to save up to um, your pension, want to make sure your pension is in place. What are your goals? We are ready to work with you. Company, individual, retail, and we're willing to offer you products and services because we do it in an integrated way. 
integrated financial products and services across the consumer. So we have our retail, corporate, SME offering products and services to meet the business objectives, your life objectives. That's what's different. And we stay very close to our client from a client experience perspective. And um, so therefore, we are very proud to be where we are today, 30 years in, regionally integrated. Um, I'm integrated in terms of strategic investments with our Satchiko Holdings. And um, we we don't plan to really stop growing because we are we are, we learn grow and invest. That's what we are all about. Because we don't stop learning, and we know, and we don't stop growing, and we don't stop investing. So we're definitely going to continue to learn, grow, and invest. That's what JMB is all about. I'm definitely going to be using that clip. Thank you so much for that. Um, so if you if you were to say so, I know that we have a limited time, so I'm skipping ahead with some of the questions that I was planning to ask later on. But if you were to give us a vision as to where you see JMB being, maybe in the next three to five years, maybe as, even as far as ten years, what would JMB look like at those points for you? Well, definitely, what we from a geographic perspective, we definitely will be um, um, spread out a little wide across Central America and the Caribbean. From a digital perspective, we'll have a totally digital experience for our for our customers, um, um, where there there needs no needs to be any kind of physical interaction from onboarding right through to um, right through to originating, right through to closing, right through the whole entire client process will be digital. That's 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 where we are, and um, and we are and we continue to build out um, services which are complementary. And actually required in our suite of services for our clients. So therefore, you know, um, and we continue to integrate our, um, our, our operations, make it a lot more efficient, a lot more efficient. And by standardizing on our platforms, banking, investments, mutual funds, and making it a lot more efficient to do business and, great, and growing our business um, um, faster than we're growing our expenses and therefore really increasing our efficiency ratio. Okay, so it's it's so with with so you had a recent acquisition that was mentioned. Um, I, I'm trying not to to to, to mispronounce that name. <laughs> it's, it's Bell a Bank. Bank. There was Bell Bank, Bell Bank in the Dominican Republic, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we call, we had what we call like a more savings and loan bank in the DR before. We have acquired you no know, the Bell Bank, which is a small commercial bank, you now to really give us the capabilities, the product diversification from cards right through to um, um, credit cards and um, the whole suite of solutions that commercial banks offer, that savings and loan banks offer. And then we integrate that platform on um, what we call our Temenos um, core banking platform. So we'll have trained that Dom Rep and Jamaica on one platform. When you roll out products and services, you roll them out right across the um, the, the banking platform, much more efficient and much and okay. much much easier to manage. So, so the question that I had relating to that acquisition, right? So, are we are we going to see that acquisition being being accredited to your your earnings going forward? Is that when will that that transaction be be completed? Well, that's, that's, that's sounds like a patchy question. That's a that's a CFO question you're asking okay, right here. Okay, so, no problem, no problem. So, I'm going to have to leave, you know, um, Jeremy, because everybody on the bus is waiting on me. Look here. If you want to see, everybody is on the bus is waiting on me to go right now. So I have to go because we're standing up in the middle of a football field. Okay. No problem. Thank you so Patrick, much for this time. Patrick, can take it from there. I'd appreciate it. Okay. Patrick, right. Patrick is our group CFO and he understands every living strategy um, that Jeremy has. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Thank you very much. All right, Patrick, you're you're kind of thrown into the deep end. Yes, here. Sir. <laughs> so um, we'll just have to ask you all of the questions that we had for Keith as well that that were not answered. So we got the background from 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 Keith as to the structure of JMMB, the, the the strategy really in terms of areas of focus. So what what I was hoping to know, we we had a series of questions that were just kind of going to go through step by step because there, there are okay. some questions that were submitted. We'll get to the financials a little bit down further. I'm okay. sure there are some things that persons would want to know about. 
So I'm just going to go through them. And then when, when we get closer to the end, we can talk about some of the, the financial stuff, right? Okay. So in about December last year, I think it was December 9th or 11th, there was a notice about a share buyback program. There was an announcement about it. We were informed that it, it is expected to start in this current financial year that started April 1st. Uh, there was actually a little confusion there by some persons thinking that the buyback would have started April 1st, but we, 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 we learned later on that that was not the case. Tell us about the reasoning behind the program, where the program is right now, and when we can expect to start seeing some, some notices of buyback starting to, to take place. Okay. So, so you are correct. So the, the board, um, the group board approved a share buyback program. And what that um, share buyback program is designed to do is basically to defend the value of, of the JMMB stock, right? Because if you look at the, the JMMB stock as it is right now, um, sometimes you see um, trading small quantities of, of, of units being traded, which, which depress the price. And if you look at the value of JMMB as it trades um, with its peers, um, we trade about 1.4. I mean, other other peers in our in in our market trade at about 1.75, some over two. So in terms of the value, Keith just spoke to the, the regional diversification of a, of a group with a complete suite of services in Jamaica, Trinidad, and Dominican Republic. So there is there is a lot of value in in the group. There is profitability in the group. There is consistent dividend payments, and but yet still you're not seeing it reflected in the share price. So what that share buyback program was designed to do is to you know to pr pr protect the stock against those small disposals where it depresses the stock price. Over okay. the last. Um, I would say six or seven months, we have seen the stock traded up um, in the mid forties, um, going up, um, we have traded as high as 60. So uh, what we're saying is that we would execute that buyback program where we see any potential for fall off in the prices where it's not warranted. Um, you know, so what you'll do is see that going forward, but it's not a design program. We're just gonna buy it back. To, okay, to, to, so to improve the value. Interesting. So, so what you're saying is that the everything that needs to be in place for the share buyback to take place is all, you're already past that point, it and now you're just waiting for the best timing or the best price for you to buy. Is that to to, that? to 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 execute on that? Correct. Okay, I think we were we were expecting somewhat of a notice to come out because the very last notice that we saw said it was pending approval and we didn't get a notice that said there was approval. So I think uh, some 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 persons were waiting to see an additional notice, but I think what you're saying now is that you're past that stage and it's just you determining when is the right time for you to buy. That's, for us that's, to execute, correct. Okay, all right, great. Thank you. That's definitely cleared for, for a lot of persons. The, quest, the next question that I have relating to the buyback and someone asked this is why such a small amount in terms of um, in terms of money earmarked for the buyback uh, 300 million in uh, in comparison to your total market cap well well when you look at because we have we have looked at it um, we have done the analysis around it as i mentioned earlier a lot of the trading that we see um taking place are small volumes that moves the price that shifts the price so i mean while the initial allocation is 300 million if you look historically at the the, the trade volumes that have shifted the price there are small volumes and value so the 300 dollars 200 million that was approved was in line with that historical analysis that we did it doesn't mean, therefore, also if 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 needs be that that amount needs to improve or increase, that we would not. I mean, we once it it requires us defending the value where we see it's justified, then we would do so. One one important point I need to um, share with our our stakeholders is that when you do a share buyback, 
that also reduces the value of your capital. Because this is the company now purchasing its own shares. Mm -hmm. And so in purchasing your own shares, you are reducing the, 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 the issued amount out there. And it's it a reduction cash. to, yes, it takes cash. And that cash reduces your capital amount. So it, re it reduces the value, overall value of, of, of your capital. So that is something we have to take into account. But to your specific question in terms of the 300 million, it's based on historical analysis and the volumes that we have seen in terms of that move in the price. That's how we, we okay. do 300 million. And okay. it's not set in stone. It's not set in stone. That was the initial allocation by the board. So I guess if needs be, then, I mean, we can increase that as we see fit. So would it need to go through another set of approvals or it's really... It, no, it, the, the approval that you would need can would buy be... back any amount that you want. The approval that you would need would be an approval um, by the board. Um, you need to do a notification to the regulators that you are doing such a buyback. Um, and once you do that notification and you execute, it's all about the transparency and ensuring um, fairness. Um, so once you, you, in terms of the allocation of capital, that's a board approval and a notification to the regulators. That, okay. That's basically what you need. So is there a particular price that you're aiming for? So let's say that um, the stock ended trading today at i believe around 40 dollars right if you decide yeah. to buy some shares tomorrow how soon would we see a notice that you have bought how how, how are we expecting to see that communication from you regarding you the you, you you would do a formal notification to your your regulators the jc would publish that that jmb is in type in, intending to buy about x amount of shares um, it's public. Can you ha it has to be public. It has to be made public, and 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 then once that disclosure is made for all to see. But the the fundamental and underlying point is that that buyback is designed to protect the value within JMMB. So if we see where a transaction is being executed outside of market that is not in line with normal market condition, and would him impact or hinder the value of JMMB then we would so execute. Okay, so, so what I'm hoping for there, Patrick, is an idea of a sort of timeline because timelines, I think, would give persons an understanding. So if if you're gonna buy back tomorrow, we'd get a notice maybe in a week's time. Like, I just wanted us to have that yeah, understanding. It, 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 it's very short, Jeremy. And once, you, once any notification that is sent to the regulators, they immediately post it. Um, for the public, okay. so it it it's it's not something that's going to take a month or two. It would be within days. Is the okay. point great. I'm trying to make. That that's that's where I was hoping to get to as yes. well. Right? Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So I think that kind of takes care of the share buyback questions. That was one of the things I believe our community members wanted to know. Um, so in terms of there, there's a net and and another set of questions here relating to your, your acquisition strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. So there was a question that asked, started to ask Keith about yes. the recent acquisition. Um, you know, how will that be? How soon will that be reflected in into your your earnings? And what is the 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 strategy past that? Meaning, are there any other acquisitions being planned? Are there any new territories being considered? Um, talk to us about that for a little. All right, so in terms of the acquisition that was recently announced, um, the Bell Bank, um, in the group, in the Dominican Republic specifically, we have a savings and loan bank. And what we just acquired was a commercial banking license um, from, and the entity specifically for short is Bell Bank, right? And that what that does, it gives us, allows us the full range and suites and services from a banking perspective. So right now in the DR with the acquisition of that bank, we, we currently have a commercial, we have a commercial banking license. We have the investment arm, which, which we are known for as our flagship. We have the mutual funds, um, which is called SAFI or Muto. And we will also we also have a pension fund um, business line. So in the Dominican Republic, you know, we would have a full range of services in the DR to offer our clients 
integrated financial services, one-stop shop, right? In terms of the, the, the entity itself, the, the, the intention is to merge the entity with the savings and loan bank. So you're taking on its portfolio, all its assets and liabilities, and link it onto our banking platform, which we have standardized, um, standardizing throughout the region. So we get that efficiency from that operation. Um, we are expecting by by Q3, which is our October to December, that 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 will be fully on board, um, pending all the regulatory approvals um, as well. Once you are, we have already got the regulatory approval in the Dominican Republic, which is why we would have made the announcement. So pending all the regulatory approvals and that merger, by Q Q3 we should be um, on stream and we get the benefit of those flows onto our income statement and balance sheet. Okay, so your Q3 starts October 1st? So we are, our financial year in is March and, and that would be October to December. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, so in terms of, I mean, I, I know we are in the middle of that, that integration right now. Looking ahead, uh, are there any other maybe territories being scoped out now? Are there any... Um, any so, new so, so as, 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 so as a policy, we, we have what is called a, a, a pipeline. We all at JMB Group, we have a business development um, unit and we are always looking at opportunities and pipeline. As our CEO mentioned earlier, we learn and we grow, right? And, and, and part of that growth is not just organic, but inorganic as well. Um, so we're, we're, we're looking at the, the Caribbean, there are opportunities where we're looking at Central America, as, as, as you mentioned. So we are always looking at opportunities and we do have an active pipeline, I can say that. And uh, once, once we are satisfied and it adds value and, it, and it's in line with our strategic objectives, then we will pursue it. But yes, there is an active pipeline that we're looking at right now. Okay, okay. Because, I, I mean, so the reason why I ask that question is that I'm thinking of, well, assuming that you have plans for that cash, you know, if you if you didn't, then you could essentially buy back more shares. Remember, why not, Jeremy? Investors need return. It's not just we need, you need your return on your investment in profitability and your dividends. Agreed. Agreed. So it, you need an increase in, in the share price and you need increase in profitability and because that's going to give you that dividend distribution so we have to strike that balance right yeah man, i agree i agree so I, I i'm saying it that way because i'm i'm just imagining somebody might be thinking that in terms of if you if you have this cash that maybe you're not using no for anything else then you could use it to do yeah you know buy back more shares but i i, I mean i'm I asked it because I know there is somebody watching us thinking that right now. So yeah. I, I just I just wanted to ask it in that way. All right. So in terms of um, in terms of so along that same vein, in terms of the 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 acquisition that is being done now, right? Um, the question I have here specifically is that. Um, it is seen where JMB recently did a bond raise for about 160 million USD. Is this to fund the same acquisition that we we're just speaking about? Um, can you tell us about that bond raised fuse of the funds and all that, that? Okay, that that bond the bond raise I think they're referring to is we had some debt that that matured on our balance sheet. Um, it was 7 million to be exact and 10 million US. And uh, what we did was those, we rolled that debt. Mm -hmm. So that was existing debt on our balance sheet that we basically roll and engage into new terms. So that's not yeah. new yeah. funds coming onto the balance sheet. That was just existing debt that had matured and we basically roll it with our clients. So um, that's not new debt. Um, but from a, from a cash flow um, perspective, as I said, what we, we normally do, I mean, you, if you look at the macroeconomic environment right now, I mean, there's cash that you have to hold for liquidity purposes in, in, in terms of, you know, looking at the, 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 the volatility and market condition. Because 
what we have seen is that those are the times, these are the times where you have opportunities, Jeremy, and you don't want opportunities to, 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 to come your way and, and you miss out, right? Also in terms of your cash flow as well, you wouldn't just put your cash idle, you would invest it mainly in short duration if, if you know, based on how you're positioning the balance sheet and based on market condition as well. So you're at all times, your cash will be earning for you, just to put that out there. Okay, okay. All right. Um, in terms of, so there, there are some questions relating to, I guess, more of the services side. Um, I think I want to save those and just get all the all, all the financial related questions out of the way. Um, so in terms of the, the the recent raise we've seen in terms of interest rates, uh, we've seen uh, JMMB do a notice as well about. The, the increase in rate for the, the variable rate loans. Um, how is how is that? How how are the interest rates impacting the company in the different jurisdictions? And what's the strategy in terms of you possibly considering raising those rates again? Is it based on what what maybe the 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 um, Bank of Jamaica does? How 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 do you consider our Think about making those decisions. All right. So if you if you look at the RQ1's performance, the the interest rate is definitely going to impact your business. If you look at the composition of JMMB Group's revenue, your between interest income, gain on securities trading, it's approximately 70, 72 percent of your revenue. The increase in interest rate is going to impact your net interest income. So on the cost side of the business, which is the interest cost now, the borrowing side of the business, the liability side is going to reprice much faster than the asset side. JMMB Group, while interest rate have, have, have increased about 600 basis points, we did not increase our rates um, to our clients until August 1st. So our, our Q1, which is April to June, would not have benefit from any increase in rates on the asset side of the business. However, on the liability side of the business, which is our funding, you would have seen increased rates, which is why you'd have seen the increase in interest rates um, in terms of our interest expense by 40%, while our interest income only went up by 23%. So your revenue would have been impacted, your net NII, net interest income would be impacted. And importantly as well, a main source of revenue, your gains on securities trading, this is a trading of your bonds now, would have been impacted as well. Because with the increase in interest rate, the value of your bonds would have been deteriorated. And it, this would have been pervasive throughout the industry. All financial institutions would have been impacted by this. So if your gains and securities trading is impacted and your NII is impacted, and this is the beauty of a JMMB group when we talk about diversification, what we as a group has done is, is diversified into other revenue streams. So like your cap market business line that, that provides revenue from your clients, your FX trading um, business line would have provided additional revenue and also our investment in Sajikor, which we own 23%, we're the largest stakeholder, provided a billion dollars. And from a regional diversification now, where, where, where our CEO mentioned Jamaica, Trinidad, and DR, while Jamaica and Dominican Republic would have been impacted by high interest, interest rates, Trinidad would not be, be so impacted. And therefore, Trinidad would have been able to provide greater profitability to the group in, in our quarter one. So you see the diversification of our JMMB group by business line and also by region is what allowed us to be 2% up year over year in terms of from a quarter perspective. So yes, it will be impacted, but your regional diversification strategy is what buffered you. Okay, okay. So uh, you started talking a little bit uh, a few moments ago about your management of cash. Uh, this question is, is, is coming from, well, this, this, this community member would like to know 
what's what's your your strategy for um i guess managing your your cash um outflows based on the different um based on i think they're asking well let me ask it the way that they asked it i was trying to rephrase it but let me just ask it as they asked it in q1 jmmb's net cash from operating activities was was reduced um they they have here by about nine billion quarter over quarter is this sustainable if less cash is coming from core activities how is jmmb addressing this all right so they are correct so if you look quarter over quarter um the important point there is yes last your cash generating from operating activities was 15 billion and at the, this quarter was was 7 billion however the important indicator to look at i just mentioned the fact that your net interest income would be impacted somewhat by the high interest rates and your gains and securities trade would be impacted but if you look at the cash flow in its entirety the cash flow from operating activities was positive we made seven billion in positive cash flow from 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 operations not only that if you look at your net cash flow in from operations which is taking your investing activities and your financing activity the net of that we're still positive a billion dollars so for the quarter although it was less than the prior year your cash flow generated by the business was still a billion dollars up and and that is the important indicator you need to look at is your cash flow being generating reducing or is it in, increasing quarter over quarter so from a cash flow perspective net cash flow we are still positive quarter over quarter we are a billion up so we actually ended up with 63 billion in cash at the end of the period compared to 59 billion in the prior period so so your, your your cash flow although lower where you're impacted you're still other areas which are both study and you still have a positive cash flow overall okay 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 all right i was trying to bring up the report but um i'm actually using one screen right now so i'm not going to bring it up um so next question that we have here um so this this says, what are the necessary factors that would influence JMMB team to consider a stock split? And what are your well, thoughts on Yeah, so the, the, the stock split would be, would be lowering the, the, the value of your stock and you have more units. So if you look at the, I would say to the, our investors, let's look at the value of JMMB stock right now, as you see it, right? The, the stock as it is right now is trading at around between 40 to mid 40, 40 to 45, there are thereabouts. I think we close at 41, 40.5, 41 today. If you look at that intrinsic value and you look at the value of JMB balance sheet, um, eliminating the, the temporary uh, mark to market losses, the JMB value just from a, a book value per se would be significantly more than that 40. so why would you now split that value even to a lower um, value i'm saying there is intrinsic value there we normally trade at around 1.4 our market pairs trade at around 1.7 1.8 some are even over two and they don't have the regional diversification nor the product diversification that a jmmb group has so from a book value per se and a market value per se, the JMB stock is, is significantly undervalued. So putting a stock split at this time and would not necessarily, you know, add any additional value to that. I think the value is, is there and for the, the long term investor, um, JMB, you know, adds a lot of value to your portfolio. I would say in excess, I mean, it should be at least trading at $60 right now, from my perspective. And I said, this is my, this is my personal, <laughs> personal well, I, 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 the analysis. I, I think, I think the concern there, and this is, you know, something that we, we try to have our, our, our CEOs and executives understand when we speak with them, uh, there are a few 
there are persons in the market who who believe that when when a stock price gets to a certain nominal value in terms of the higher that number the less attractive it may be to some of them so the mindset may be if it splits lower price that may cause the, the value to, to, yes. to move back up yeah. um to just to help persons understand the stock split would essentially just divide up the shares in, into equal value the market cap wouldn't change but the number of shares, shares available would change would change yeah correct. And so so you're saying that there there would be no added value to that from from your perspective especially since it's trading at such a fundamentally low value right correct correct okay, okay. all right um all right so let me get to to some of the more uh, i guess service-based questions now so there are questions relating to asking you when when do you plan to enter the credit card market um any plans for that in the near future definitely um a, a significant part of our trust and our strategy is in terms of payment services um digitization of our our platform um that is something in terms of payments overall um with it by the end of the financial year um 22 23 that is something that we are looking to have on stream not just credit card but in terms of our payment services some we're looking to bring on stream even a little earlier um our our, our digital products and stuff is is ex of extreme importance and value if you look at our numbers you would have seen some increase in our expenses and part of that is investing in that infrastructure i think the key in his opening presentation spoke to standardizing the platform across the region um, so what we have done um, and embarked on is having one standardized banking platform throughout in all three countries. So when you roll out that, that suite and services, it's, it's the same look and feel across the region and it's more efficient. It improves your efficiency ratio. So we are going through the teething pains and ensure that we lay that platform and foundation before we actually execute on, on, on that payment services. Okay. One so, of the things I really don't want to do, Jeremy, and it's very important, um, you know, the client service is very important to us in terms of the impact on how we serve our clients. So, you know, we try to do it right. I know it has been a little late in coming, but, you know, we want to get it right and ensure we do it in the, the right way so our client, when, when they receive that service, you know, it's seamless. Okay, so um, just so persons as again, as, as I say, my our 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 community members like to to hear specific dates and timelines. So you are saying it's something that they can expect in this financial year, and you are saying by well, financial it, year in 22, 23. That's our okay. that's our target. So that's by March twenty twenty three. Yes, that's our target okay. at this point. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's also questions about your mobile app. When does JMB, JMB plan to release their mobile app? Well, on our mobile app, that that we expect a little earlier. Um, we have we have done the testing. We have gotten the feedback. That is that is one of the things that our clients ask us like every day. I mean, it's it, they're 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 waiting with bated breath to have it out. Um, we are looking for the end of September. Um, is the projected rollout to look to have it up and running. Um, we have done the testing, the beta testing as they, we have received the feedbacks and we are fine tuning that. So we're looking to have that done by end of September. Okay, okay. So the next time we have a conversation reviewing your Yes, your I, I will bring really. you good tidings and, and good news. <laughs> Okay, so in terms of the plans for that mobile app, are we to expect? Because I, I know I, I've been hearing talks about a money line upgrade as well. Are are we to expect both at the same time? Is it is it is it going to be a money line upgrade mobile app with new features to to be experienced? So how how will that how will that all come together? Because there are some some. Uh, some desires from 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 the community members in terms of what's possible in terms of trading features um 
But before I go there, in terms of the mobile app, is it that everything that you're able to currently do on Moneyline, you'll be able to do on the mobile app? Is it maybe just for personal account management? What's what's the sort of target for features on the mobile app So first? Or is it right. that person can expect same thing that they're able to do on Moneyline, now they'll be able to do on the mobile app? I think uh, one of the things is um, a lot of the stuff that you do on Moneyline is something that we would want to incorporate into the app because that, that's, that is one of the um, pain points and some of the points raised. As I mentioned earlier, we did the testing and we have taken the feedback. Um, so, you know, in terms of going on your, your mobile app and being able to execute um, your your online transaction as seamlessly, just as how you do it on Moneyline, is something that our clients have, have asked for. So that is something where we are looking to, to, to introduce as well. So definitely that is something we'd want to have on the table. In terms of the Moneyline um, feature, which is our, our online platform, it's something that is constantly um, being looked at and upgraded. Um, you know, we have gone through several upgrades. Um, a lot of the features improve it. It's friendliness. It's very user friendly. Executing of your, your, your acquisition or your stock transaction online is one of the things that we introduce. So it's, we're always looking to upgrade that. Um, most of the new releases um, is continuously being worked on. So it's, it's not something that ever stops. Um, so just to put that out there, and uh, in terms of the mobile app, as I said, that is something that we are looking to have on the platform by end of September. Okay. So I know uh, one of the things Orville is saying in the chat uh, that we've we've heard before, saying that there there needs to be an editing option of your order when you when it's placed on Moneyline. I know that's one of the basic things that persons have asked about. Yes. So, yeah. So and, is that something? Yes, it is. It is that is being incorporated as well. Okay. All right. Uh, let me try and get through the rest of these questions quickly so we can take questions from the audience. Um, let me see. Let me just do a quick scan here. Okay. So there is a question in terms of the decision by JMB a few years ago to do an APU versus a rights issue. Is is it is there a preference uh, for JMB in terms of to raise funds to do APO? Is that something that can you can you talk to us about that decision? And I know the question that the person probably wants to ask as well is if you were to raise funds in the future, are you likely to do an APO? Um, can you talk to us about that for a little bit? Um, well, in terms of the raising funds in the future, um, the the APO is something that we have used in the past, and it's something that um, if if we were to do um, raising funds in terms of increasing our capital base, is what would be more likely. Um, the rights issue would 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 mean that existing um, stakeholders would be taking their allotment as is. And therefore, in terms of increasing that capital base for other shareholders could be somewhat restricted. So hence, we have gone with the APO version in the past. Um, normally, when we have gone to market um, in terms of raising capital, it's, it's normally we have always indicated what the funds would be used for, um, normally for in line with our strategic initiatives. Um, the last time we went to market, part of that strategic initiative of that capital raise was used to acquire the stake in Sajikor. Um, you have seen the return that that has been given us um, in terms of the value added to the group. So if we were to do um, an APO in the future, is something we would look at, then definitely it would have, we would definitely share that with the market in terms of what the funds would be used to do, definitely. Okay, okay. So, so the... So you're saying there is not necessarily a preference, though you, you did mention the rights issue may be a little bit restrictive in terms of any new investor getting access yeah. to those. Um, and then the decision comes on to, I guess, what you believe is best at the time. Yes, yes. But because with, with a rights issue, what, what that means is that existing um, shareholders has the right to maintain their percentage holding unless they give up that right. 
Um, so if existing shareholders was to take their holdings percent or maintain their percentage holding, then any additional allocation um, you know, would be restricted to new shareholders coming in. So um, an APO um, worked, it worked for us in, in, in the past. Um, you know, that would be um, probably our preference. But we do look at all the permutations, um, you know, so, I mean, we will do a similar um, thing going forward. And in terms of the use of funds, that is something we would definitely communicate to the market. Okay, okay. All right, thank you for that. I'm just doing a scroll through here. Um, so I'm going through the chat to ensure that um, we get all the questions here. One second. So I say, I say, Alain was, was um, telling us that we were late. Apologies for that. Um, all right, so scrolling through just one second here. Um, so comment here saying, you know, JMB gave uh, gave me a sense of family and belonging. How does JMB plan on maintaining that status and not becoming like other banks? Well, as as I said to you earlier, um, our most important asset in the group is is people. I mean, it's something we value. Our customer service is something that's very important to us. Um, we take it very, very seriously. Everything we do is all about is customer focus. So while we have grown and it has become more challenging, but we do recognize that the, the, the value added for our, our clients, um, being in our clients' world and serving our clients um, is, is extremely important. And we have continued to focus on that. Um, it has become more challenging. Um, that as a fact because as you become a regional um, company across right now three countries different cultures but so far we have been able to maintain that that focus about staying close to our clients and serving our clients you know you know just meeting our clients need that will not change in terms of from a group strategic focus you know that will remain um you know and then we just being in our clients world it, it, it's, a, it's the most important thing that we do, and that is underpins our success. Um, so I don't see us from a board perspective and a group perspective changing that. Okay, okay. I mean, we, 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 it's something that we definitely can notice that JMMB puts a lot of work in. Uh, next comment here from Orville is saying that he thinks JMMB needs to mop up some of that liquidity in the market. Um, I, I definitely agree with Arville on that. <laughs> Don't uh, disagree with you where that is concerned, Arville. Yeah. Devon here was asking what price you were intending to buy the shares at. I think you addressed it where you didn't say a specific price. You're saying if you see it maybe going below a certain threshold, then you'd step in to try and maintain the value that, that, that it has. That's correct. Okay. Um, Elaine is saying that, uh, but there is no rational in the market right now. The market is not responding to performance anymore. Small dividend payout is also a, a contributing factor. What are your thoughts on this matter? Well, I well, you have to look at the um, our analysis when we looked at it in terms of the impact of the prices. Persons, people sell for different reasons. Some persons took some cash off the table. There are, there are persons where we saw um, regionally, they took the arbitrage, um, like a whole line in Trinidad would have sold their stock in the Jamaica market and have the exposure to that FX. There are different reasons. Um, right now, you'd have seen an increase in interest rates, um, short-term interest rate at 6%. Um, persons are moving out of stock into more short-term investments. There are, there are a variety of reasons as to why, you know, the, the stock is, is, is not moving. And it's not just a JMB stock, but the, the market. Even in terms of the timing now, we know that this seasonally at this point in time, August, September, there's, you know, you have the back to school. You don't have that high level of trading in, 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 in stocks at this, this point in time. So there are a number of reasons 
what I can say to you in terms of fundamental values there um, and over the long term, um, those fundamentals normally win out. And, you know, the, the JMMB stock is a stock that entity. We pay dividends twice a year. You're getting a regional diversification. Your balance sheet is strong. You're getting business line diversification and regional diversification. Long term, those fundamentals will stand up over time. And that is why investing over the long term, you know, normally pays off. I, I was going to ask you, this is a, a question that I like to ask personally because I am somewhat of a dividend investor. So you mentioned small dividends. I'm not going to, to isolate that part, but is there any intention to maybe increase the current dividend yield that is being paid out? Yeah, so fundamentally, our, our policy has always been um, 15 to 30%. Um, we have always looked to pay more. Um, once we have, once we make more or in abnormal... Well, uh, well, uh, 15 to 30% of profits for the year? Net, net earnings. Okay. Yeah, 15 to 30 percent of net earnings. Um, they're, they're, we're always looking to pay more. Historically, if you look where we have made um, significant profits, we have paid um, special dividends as well. Um, even in the lull where dividend payments were suspended, the board approved a special payment um, to its stakeholders. Um, we also recently looking at getting back to our regular dividend cycle as well. So we're always looking to distribute. What we have had to do is to balance that with our expansion as well in terms of the growth and all the things that we are putting in place. Um, the standardization of our platform, recent acquisition and growth um, throughout the, the market. So it's a balancing act, but the, the, the answer to the question, yes, we're always looking to pay more um, once we earn more while balancing, you know, the, the, the growth throughout the market. So. You know, okay. And I'm a, I'm an invest I'm a shareholder in JMMB Group as well, so you know I would like more dividends as well, you know. But you have to balance it though. But you know, the answer to the question, we do look to pay more as a okay. board. All right. Uh, did, this is not a question, but something that I wanted to highlight here. ETL Beats is asking you all to like the video, guys. Please take a moment to like the video if you've been here, getting value from this conversation please like the video we're still not seeing that that view to like ratio is extremely low so please please like the video all right um let me see here uh question is guyana in the pipeline for jmmb well what i will say is the the entire caribbean region the region is in the pipeline guyana is a market um with tremendous potential and and therefore if opportunities arise there we would definitely be looking at um guyana for sure okay uh question from orville what happens if the proposed strategy to execute the buyback doesn't materialize how is management going to come to that um when he says that the, 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 the i think buyback... I, I think what he's asking here and it's probably similar to what i'm thinking so it's we're four months into the year you have eight months to go. As far as we know, we haven't started to buy back yet. What if what if you get to a certain point, maybe let's say the end of the year, and you don't believe that you'd have found that a good opportunity to buy? Would you just be using that 300 million in one quarter? Like, is is there is there a timeline where you may say, well, let's start buying back some shares now? Or do you just give yourself until you know March? 31st and if it is that you haven't bought any then you just buy everything all on, on that day I, th I think the underlying principle the underlying principle would be to protect the value of jmb group that 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 would be the underlying principle and where we see um the opportunity to protect that value or improve that value we as a group will always look to execute where that is concerned that that is how i would look at it um you know so in terms of the buyback strategy there are a number of things you you can do but what i would say that we will definitely always look to protect the value or enhance the value 
and where that opportunity arises, we're always going to execute where that is concerned. Okay. I don't know if that answers the question, but that is I, as best I, as I can answer. So I, I'd probably, I mean, I'd, or really can let us know if that answers your question. I would say it doesn't, but that's just based on what you've said here so far, because the, it sounds to me as if, you know, assuming that, let's say the price remains the same, then that may not trigger a buyback based on, on what you're saying, right? Because that means the current value would be maintained. Yes, but but then but then you would have gone you would have gone six months. Um, let's say we we we're at the end of December and mm -hmm. and the value is still um where it is. Mm -hmm. The value in the value in in the group, um, assuming that we continue to move in the positive direction, which I expect we will, mm -hmm. um, you know, would have improved. And therefore, there would be no justification for the value of JMB stock to be there. So, if no. executing there would would be a, a very good financial decision, that's what I'm saying. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I understand what you're saying now. Clear to me. Uh, Dante is saying, uh, will your staff costs going forward be contained or continue to keep going higher? So what, what, what you would have seen there, um, Dante, would, would be a result of our start of the financial year, which is April 1st. We would have paid an inflationary increase to our team members. Remember, we were coming out of a financial, coming out of a pandemic where we would have you know, restricted staff growth and staff costs. Um, so, you know, we don't foresee any significant um, increases going forward. Um, where the, the move now is to standardize and become a little more operational efficient and, and executing um, on, on our project initiatives. So yeah. the increase that you're seeing reflected there in our Q1 numbers is being the inflationary increase that we would have paid our team members at the start of the financial that, that, that's definitely nice to hear i hope more companies adopt that that mindset as well i think we already addressed this question about the the interest rates and how that affect how that will affect jmmb um i think you've spoken to that adequately already uh next question with the pending recession on on the horizon how is jmmb planning to reduce its liabilities and the impact on core business well, in terms of the, 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 you would have seen the increase in interest rates. Um, as I said, it would have impacted our NII. Our gains and securities trading would have been impacted. What we are focusing is on what we call smart growth, growing our core um, business line. So we have shifted, we have shifted the strategy in terms of growing in other areas um, regionally on our cap market supporting um, a number of corporate clients or the fx side of the business our fund management um, side of of the business as well our collective investment scheme and th those business line also require less capital they are not as capital intensive as as your investment business line where your, your repo you would require the margin so you'll see that shift into our banking and our other products and therefore increase in our core. It would not be as fast as, as, as say, a repo business line, but over the long term, the core operations of the group will continue to grow and, and generate positive cash flow. And, and just as I mentioned earlier, when you asked the question in relation to the cash flow, you notice year over year, the, the, the revenue was generated from operation while it was less, but in terms of the overall cash flow generated by the business, it was positive. Yeah. Um, so, and that is that is a trend that you will see going forward. Yes, we it would not be as significant and, and large as maybe um, the, the prior period because of the impact to your interest rates and your securities trading but from a positive cash flow the group is going to move in the right positive direction okay okay and utilization of less capital okay okay so natoya is asking how how does one find out who is their advisor 
Well, as normally that one is um, assigned to you, um, Latoya, it, it's documented. Um, a simple, a simple um, phone call to our, our customer service, um, one of our customer service reps. I just ask any member, I mean, that is something that's documented within our system um and we can easily um uh, remedy that but you should be in contact with your advisor um you know because that is how you get that personalized service and and and, and treatment it's, it's okay. very important all right same same latoya um uh, they would love to see moneyline implement a feature so that i can see their unrealized gains and losses is that something that is coming in terms of the list of features? Yes, that, that very, very, it's a reasonable request. That is something that as, as, as part of the beta testing, I know um, Gifford and team has been working on as to where, as to how soon that aspect would be implemented. I, I can't give you a timeline around that, but that okay. is something that um, definitely would be on because in terms of your personal portfolio, we see all that asset and your mark to market gains and losses on that. I mean, it is what you're asking for here, which is a, a reasonable request. Yep. And something in the pipeline for sure. All right. David Rose is saying that he's looking forward to seeing you at the AGM. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> all right. Uh, Orville is saying you would love to see the share price at $260 in three years' time. I, I would love that too because I'm a shareholder, so that would definitely make my day. But I mean, we are we are put the we are putting the fundamental things in place. I mentioned the smart growth. I mentioned moving, ensuring your core is growing, positive cash flow being generated. We're also looking at inorganic growth. Um, you know, I've, I've been in JMB you now over ten years and. You know the strides that we have made um, regionally and from a product um, diversification. You know we are set up for to do some really positive things in the future. Amen. All right, um, David Rose is asking with respect to JMB EGL and your technology spend. What can users look forward to, and what are you projecting a substantial? And are you projecting us a, a, a substantial raise in capex on technology? Yes, and you would have you would have seen it in our spend. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we are standardizing the banking platform throughout the region. We also mentioned the digitization and all the digital products that um, we are doing. So the capex is is part of our our spend. Um, I remember in terms of our Q1, just just. You know, I think our Q1 capex, if I recall, um, from our financing activity, was like about 600 million, 566 million, just, just, just in our Q1. So we are invested in technology. Um, it's, it's, it's a major part of the long-term plan, and then going forward, long-term, you will get that operational efficiency. Okay. All right. Um, I think we answered this question before about interest rates. Um, I guess Dante is asking, how is this higher interest rate environment different from a couple of years ago before Jamaica reduced its interest rates? Is it is it a better investment environment or same or worse? Okay. I think let me read that again. I think I think I understand now what what's being asked. So how is this higher interest rate environment different from a couple of years ago before we had, we had um, as a country, reduced the interest rates? Um, and then, you know, asking, is it a better investment env environment or is it the same or worse? So, so remember, we went through the, 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 the JDX and where we did the whole restructuring. Um, the oversight committee impact was, was put in place. Um, and the whole um, transformation in terms of the central bank being more independent in terms of fiscal policy and prudence, I would say that we are more prudent. Um, the, the governance structure is, is, is there far more transparency. You have the PSOJ 
um, being involved. Um, the environment that we're in, I would say, I mean, the macroeconomic environment now is something that's outside of our control, but from a Jamaica and, and local jurisdiction, I think we have far more oversight, we have more governance, we have more transparency, more involvement from the private sector with government and also the central bank. So from, from, from that standpoint, I would say the environment we are in is, is definitely much better. Um, you know, the impact of the increased interest rates um, in terms of controlling inflation and, and all of that, I mean, you know, it does impact the individual, but from a financial perspective, um, from where our country stand, standpoint, I think we're in a much better place for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, question from David Rose. Uh, I noticed JMMB jail and its various subsidiaries have pushed down the tenure of, of various debt instruments. Is this something you guys intend to execute more to manage capital? Yeah, well, well, I mean, some. If you look at our balance sheet, um, there, there are debts which had matured, which we, 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 um, some we restructured, we rolled. Um, what that does, it gives you room from a cash flow perspective and from a capital perspective, in terms of our long-term strategy. As I mentioned, we are looking to execute in other areas that utilizes less capital. Um, but from a capital perspective, it does um, bolster the group, you know, but the long term would be to move into other business line that is utilizing this capital. So it's a combination, I would say. Um, yes, it does benefit the group from a capital perspective, and also we're looking to move into other business lines that utilizes less capital, which we call our smart growth strategy. Okay, okay. Lance is asking, what part does digitization and automation play in JMMB's strategy going forward? I think you kind of alluded to that. I think you've spoken yes. about the, the yeah. technology. Well, Lance, Lance I, I think, is definitely an, an IT person. So, you know, that it play a major part of our strategy going forward. Um, I mentioned the platform and the automation process and stuff, the investment that we're doing, you know, making it seamless and easier for our clients. I mean, going forward, it is a necessity for for any business going forward. It's, it's a must, and we're making that investment. All right. Steph, um... Any updates on the progress of JMMB's new branch in Ligani being built? Are there other branches in scope, whether in TT, Jamaica, or DR? Yes, there, there are. Um, you will see the construction taking place. It's, it's not just for construction in Ligani. It's not just for own purposes. It's commercial and investment um, oriented as well. In terms of, there are plans um, for new branches, but branches in terms of um, scale, um, we do the necessary um, research and analysis before we implement such a branch. Um, you know, I mean, we're not looking to go all cap costs, um, brick and mortar. Um, you know, try and do it in an efficient way from operationally it can be effective and efficient for our clients. Um, some of the acquisitions that we, we did in DR in terms of Bell Bank that would be some leverage in terms of additional branches there. But as we grow, we're looking to grow in a more efficient manner and cost effective manner um, because we still have to provide a return for you, our shareholders. Okay. All right, this question from Devon um, is asking do you, do you believe that the APO is a major reason for the high liquidity in the market? and stagnant share price? Um, as in the recent APO, no, I don't I don't think so. I mean, they, you, you would have seen recently where um, the central bank would have been pulling a lot of liquidity out of the market. Um, you have been conversion of US flows to based on the shortage of the J dollar liquidity. Um, the, the, the APO, as, as we did it, um, 
we, you know, the funds, a significant part of the funds was used for the acquisition of Santa Cruz Financial Company. You have seen the return on that investment, um, the potential that that group has uh, providing the returns and, and cash flow to the group, you know, will, in the long term, in my view, is going to provide a significant return on that investment. We're starting to benefit from that. So I, 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 I wouldn't say that is the reason. I mean, there are various reasons, as I said, shareholders have looked to capitalize in terms of profitability on their stock. Persons looking for liquidity, I mean, persons switching on their investment into short-term fixed income. There are a number of reasons. Um, one thing is sure though, JMMB as a group, the value is there. And as I said, over the long term, I mean, you will realize that value. All right. Uh, Stacy is saying that she really appreciates this live. Thank you for being here, Stacy, and for liking the video. I hope that you've done that. Um, David uh, is asking, didn't you already complete a bank standardization in the last financial year? Yes, we did some standardization in Jamaica, Trinidad, and now we're, 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 we're standardizing in the Dominican Republic as well. So good question, David. So it's, it's really completion of that standardization throughout the region. Um, we would have done that last year in Trinidad, and now we are, we are doing that finalization in Dominican Republic. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, I think we have a couple more questions here. So, so um, Elaine is asking, with the push for EV technology in Jamaica and the world, what, is, what are JMMB's views on this and loans for purchasing these vehicles? Well, I mean, in, 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 in terms of the, the whole, I mean, technology, I mean, it's, it's something that's evolving. I mean, with the, the, I think COVID has taught us that, I mean, the, 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 the standard core is no longer um, in effect. Um, we are open. I mean, it, remember, also, we need to bear in mind a lot of this comes through um, regulatory approval as well um it's something that is on the table as to as to how the regulator will will accept it and push this through it's you know time will tell um i'm not sure how how quickly that will happen to be honest with you okay all right that's a, a, it so the reason why i um i think it's interesting to ask this question is that we did an interview with the CEO of FESCO on Monday, and he was mm -hmm. saying one of the things he notices is that the banks haven't figured out a way to to to, to finance it. <laughs> so that's part of yeah. the reason why for them they're not seriously considering it. So I think that that question was definitely relevant uh, for us here. All right. So one last question I see here from David with respect to 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 DR. What is the greater prospects, especially with the with the acquisition and merger of the banks, I'm not sure exactly what. Um, well, what I, yeah, I'm, I'm, well, in terms of Dominican Republic, I would answer that question is that in Dominican Republic, you're talking about 10, 10 million people, uh, compared to Jamaica, where it's three, three point five. Um, the it's it's a huge growth market. Um, their potential for growth. Um, is significant. Um, we have a commercial bank there now. We have an investment arm. We have a fund manager. And we are one of only five persons in the country to have a pension um, fund license. So the potential in terms of from a growth perspective in the Dominican Republic is significant. Um, you know, it, it, it's something that we are very excited about. And I think um, in the long term, it's going to add a lot of value for the JMMB group. Okay. All right. I believe that is all of our questions. Um, so, so Elaine is saying that um, I will be putting JMMB on my watch list. I, I think you should put JMMB in your portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> so, so typically the question that we ask as our final question is what type of investor do you see 
is ideal for your company? So for, for JMB, who would you say is the ideal investor for a company like JMB? So if you look at how um, JMB was founded, right? It, 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 it was about creating a product for clients who, who did not have um, a certain suite and level of investments available um, to them. If you look at our, our customer base and, 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 and our clients, we are, we are very strong in retail. JMMB is for everyone. Small, large, everyone. You know, we cater for everyone. We cater to your needs. I think our CEO said it best. If you're looking to, to plan your professional future, if you're looking to buy a house, if you're looking to just start out your career and you want to put a plan in place, JMB is for everyone. I mean, there is no limit. You know, if, if you have a $1,000 that you need to invest, you can invest it at JMB. You know, there, there, there is no segregation. I mean, we are open to everyone. You know, and that's how we add our value. Our clients is our greatest asset. That is our view. And that is how we, we, we treat you, know, you as, a, as an investor. Okay, okay. All right, so two questions kind of snuck under the, the, the door here. So uh, Devon is asking, are there any companies that JMB is working on bringing to market because he hasn't seen any for a long time? What, what I will say, um, what what we do have a business unit in the group. It's called our Capital Market Group. And that group support um, not just only taking clients to market, but in terms of raising capital, I mean, structured deals. Um, what has happened, um, as you would realize, because of the whole macroeconomic environment, um, there has been some, some lull in, in that year to some respect. However, we do continue to support our clients with other transactions. What we have seen is other transactions coming forward on the table. But yes, we do um, take clients to market. We do have an, a business line dedicated to assist any client who would, who would like to do that. Um, you know, I know there are, there are things in the wings, but what has happened is because of the market environment, um, you know, client tend to execute on other various type of transaction, which is probably why you haven't seen that us taking, um, you know, other entities to market at this time. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Lance is asking if the USA or UK is in JMB is in JMB's future. Well, <laughs> what I say, we're, 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 we're open lands once the opportunity presents itself and it fits in with our strategic initiative um we will pursue it um as i said earlier in on the chat we do have a, a a business um an active pipeline that we monitor um we looked at the various opportunities there are various stages that they go through but once it fits in with our strategic initiative and we see where it adds value i mean we we definitely consider it yeah so Dante is asking, so you mentioned earlier that there are some, some less capital intensive business activities that JMB is focusing on. He's asking for specifics. What, what, what are some of those activities that you referred to? All right. So what, what, what I was indicating historically, our flagship would have been JMB Investments, JMB Limited, right? And that has been predominantly a fee income um, re repo business line where you have your assets supported by your repo liability which requires a margin and requires capital what you what you what we have basically shifted the focus to is you're you're looking at the cap market business line in terms of supporting your your clients your collective investment scheme your fund managers your mutual funds your fx um line what you, you are now doing regionally those type of business line does not require you capital to support that type of business. So you will get that revenue stream, not as significant as the your repo business stream, but over the long run, it provides a positive cash flow for you. Okay, okay. All right, I said no more questions, but I see only one. 
So I'm going to take this very, very last one. I, I think Devon, based on what, what you were saying earlier, um, he's, he's asking if you meant that the market, well, Devon, I'm going to ask you to rephrase that. I don't understand it. I don't know if you see it. I, I think it's when we're talking about bringing companies to market. Um, so I'm not sure, Devon. Are, are, if, yeah. if you can rephrase it right now, then we can take it. If not, uh, thank you so much, Patrick. Send my regards to, to Keith as well. Thank you both for joining us. I think it was a, a lengthy but well-needed discussion. We hope that we're able to speak to you at later dates or whenever the subsequent earnings come out because I'm I'm definitely going to want to see the share buyback happen. That's one of those things I want to see take place. Um, and, I, and, and I'm looking forward to the new upgrades for Moneyline, at the, the mobile app, things like that. So I know that we have more things to talk about, but greatly, greatly appreciate the time. I think you've yeah, given man. us some answers that we're hoping for. Um, there are definitely some more things that will give you some time to, to, to implement, and then we can speak again at a later date. All right? Okay, so thank the you pleasure so much. pleasure was on mine, definitely. Um, you know, I know we are here to provide information to our clients. You know, part of our thing is to, to, to you know, to keep our clients informed and to provide the information. So, you know, the pleasure was on me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Devon just commented here. He's saying that it sounds as if you are saying that the market isn't favorable for an equity raise. Um, no, yeah. that's not that that's not what I was saying. I'd say what I was saying is that be, because you would have seen that um, persons have gone to market and have been successful. What I've what I the, the point I was making is that their client needs are of somewhat um, different and different, you know. Yeah. And in terms of us not taking. Um, clients to market um, it's not that we don't do that or offer that type of service but what we have seen is in terms of needs in other areas where we have tried to facilitate because our our job and our objective is to service the client needs so I mean once a client have a need then we, we basically we, we try and, and, and address okay. those needs that's the point I was making okay Thank you. Thank you for clarifying, Patrick. Thanks again so much. We'll speak again soon. All right. Great. Take care. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I know that was a little bit longer than our hour, but I thought it was important. Since we had two, two guests, I thought it would make sense to go a little bit longer. GMMB is one of those companies that we understand that there will be a lot of questions. So thank you for sticking around with us. Please, please, please like the video. And I definitely also want to celebrate our 6,000 subscriber. I wonder if the person is here who was number 6,000, definitely would want you to identify yourself so we can just thank you. Really do appreciate you guys. I, I really like the fact that our community is growing and we're hoping to get to 10,000 by the end of the year. So we are 60% there. Thank you guys so much. Only 53 likes on the video, guys. Please, please. Um, there are 76 persons here. Can we get everyone just to like the video? Thank you guys so much again. You can look forward to our class, as I said, coming up on September 3rd. We want to thank VM for agreeing to sponsor that class. The link is in the description. Our link tree link is there. You click on that, you can go to register for the class. And we have some other activities coming up. Uh, so please do stay tuned to our social media. I'm not going to go into a lot of updates now because we, we are well, well over time. But thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you in the next video. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at learngrow.